Hi folks, welcome to the channel. And in this video, we're going to look at Optics 2022 from Boris FX. Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick. I'm a photographer from Galway in Ireland. And we're going to look at some plugins today, specifically Optics 2022. Now I love Optics, and so this new version has me very excited because there's so much really, really cool stuff in it. We're going to dive straight in. I've got an image open in it already, so we're not waiting on anything to load. And we'll just have a look at some of the new stuff. This is just an overview. We're not going to go into too much detail. It's just showing some of the new stuff that's there. And in future videos, I will have a look in more detail. And if you subscribe to the channel, you'll get to see them. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll definitely be told of them arriving. All right, so let's look now. So if you've used optics already, the first thing you'll notice is that the interface looks radically different, as in a lot different. Stuff has moved around, uh, it looks really updated and modern, and yeah, I, I actually really, really like this. Now it's gonna take me a little bit to get used to some of the changes. Uh, for a start, um, all of this here, the apply, cancel, reset is on the bottom. It used to be up in the top corner. The mask icon, create mask, generate mask, used to be much bigger. Um, and we see some with the masking tools have slightly changed as well with uh, some of the way some of the bits are. But here we go. And um, it's a couple of big things as well. We have a couple of new uh, filters, but the big one, which has its own section, is Particle Illusion. So Particle Illusion is a standalone app, and it's also part of Boris FX Continuum that's used in uh, movies. Obviously, Boris FX are mostly a movie thing, and Optics is their dedicated photo package. And what they've been doing is they've been moving stuff from their video to their still photography. So we got the Sapphire stuff the last time around, and now we're starting to get some of the stuff from Continuum. So we have Particle Illusion, and we also have Beauty a dish. Now we're gonna come in here to Filter, and so let's go look at, oh sorry, Beauty Studio rather. Um, Beauty uh, Studio, so uh, that's kind of a bit small. So let me just move this up a little so we can see it properly. And um, oh, the other thing is that we also have workspaces, which I'll cover in a little bit. So let's double click into Beauty Studio. And what you can see is that we have, the presets are now on the left. They used to be tied into parameters, but parameters are now actually on their own. So you have both of them visible at the same time, which was something that users were asking for. So that's really, really good. Now, Beauty Studio basically will apply skin uh, effects, and this has actually been done for video. So it's just taken it over. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but basically it automatically creates a matte and this is basically the mask where stuff is. So wherever stuff is white, that is where it's been applied. And where it's darker, it's not being applied at all. Now you can apply your own mask on top of the mat already. And um, I'm not going to spend too much time uh, looking at it, but you have all of these presets. So that way you can like do subtle smoothing as much as you want and, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but we're not, we're not covering that. We're just talking about what's going on. All right. So um, obviously we have, then we go for particle, uh, uh, they're okay. No, they're just in the particular filter names as well. And um, so, if I just click X to come, it actually bring me out of search. Hopefully. Oh no, I think I just escape as escape to get out of search. Yeah, there we go. And so we have PI complete. So that's particle illusion complete, and that is all of the presets. Now, see how tiny our little bar is here. So that is telling you there is an awful lot of presets. There's 1,700 plus presets. Uh, with particles and you can use a search to find them. So you can search for fire, for example, and then your, your fire thumb presets will come up and thumbnails will just load in or smoke or fog or any of those. All right. So you just see them really quickly. Now, we're just going to stick here with this one for a second. And um, so this is the, the base one, which is kind of a wormhole. But if we look here, uh, what's in a lot of these presets is you got this time option. So these, because they're coming from video, they're timeline based. And so after, as time goes on, you can see we have different looks. So we have a huge amount of looks that are slightly different for each of these, which is fantastic. So before you go in to make any changes here, you already have an option that's making a huge difference straight away, which I love. So let me jump into fire here, for example. Uh, wait for some of these to load. Oh, sorry, that's smoke. So let me just go to the search. So we're just inside fire. Uh, let me grab into fire two because that's kind of nice and big. And again, grab timeline. See, we can make a lot of changes. So grab something like that. And sometimes you have a few of on-screen controls 
but in this case here it's just the center position. I'd like if master scale was there. And so I'm just going to scale it up so it's a little bit larger. Now you can come in here and play with the particle properties. Um, so the life, number, size, velocity, all of these things that affect what's happening with the particles that create the look. Uh, random seed would also say, for example, change how it looks. So let's go for something like that there, which is great. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a really quick mask here. Um, so like an easy mask. And so with a left click, you're doing you're selecting where you want the mask to be. And then with a right click, you'll get a red one saying this is where you don't want the mask to be. Now I'm not being super accurate here because we're just showing this really, really quickly. And then we click the cog here for generate mask, which is a different icon than before, but it's in the same rough position. And this will generate our mask. And I'm, I'm going to talk very quickly about some of the other stuff that's inside uh, Particle Illusion, but I will give this a little bit more time in depth at another stage where I'll do a dedicated video on some of the stuff that's in Particle Illusion. Maybe just cover some fire stuff specifically or smoke stuff, etc. So just done a reasonable job of this. All right. So let's jump on and uh, create something else. So just come up here to the layer stack and create something else. And we're going to very quickly look at some of the other options that are there. We're not going to spend too long at them. So we have Ultra Zap. And the big thing about Ultra Zap is that Zap is really cool for lightning. But Ultra Zap is more ultra because you can have more bolts. Another cool thing is that you've also got control over the tapering. So the brightness, you can control where the brightness starts to fade out on the taper. And the bolt branchiness is there. So all these additional bolts. But you can also have secondary bolts coming out as well, which is super, super cool. Right. So other things that are there very quickly are waves. So we have the warp wave. And that will kind of gives us this warp effect. And very quickly as well, we have emboss. Uh, so we have embossed glass. And I believe embossed shiny is new as well. These are more text based effects. So I haven't been using these. And but as you can see, they can be used for background. So you could actually mask them to have them in the background for product photography or for text or stuff like that, basically. Uh, so those are particularly cool. There's also a pin warp tool, a tool um, for shaping. Uh, so pin warp. And now I'm just learning how to use pin warp. So we have enable a pin. So by having this, thus we can center the position and move stuff around and just create warps. Now there are ways to uh, move these, but I am just learning this tool myself. So I'm just really kind of showing what it does. All right, so that is basically pin warp and you can have up to 20 different pins that you can move around. Now, if you're using the puppet tool or puppet warp tool, it does some of this, but the problem is you're restricted by the position of other pins. Whereas with this, it doesn't matter where the pins are. So if we go in with a second pin, it doesn't matter if it's overlapping with the other one. And as you see, we can see that it's the number two, so we know which pin we're actually looking at. Okay. So a couple of other things to mention as well is that if you're using the M1 Mac, you get M1 support with GPU acceleration, which is great. Um, and of course, like we've got so many new gobos and, and things like that as well. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to get rid of this layer altogether for a second. And I am going to go and apply this for a second. So it's going to go back into Photoshop. So here we have the image back inside of Lightroom or inside of Photoshop. So we can see what the edit has done there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn that off for a second. I'm going to duplicate the layer again. But this time I'm going to turn on the layer mask here. I'm going to go back into optics again. Oh, sorry, I keep making this mistake where I forget to select on this part uh, for the image rather than the mask. So that's a good way of letting you know that you need to do it as well. And come into Boris FX Optics 2222 and open that again. And what's cool about this is another feature. Uh, which is the export masks. So you can now export the masks. And when you load optics first, you're going to get a dialog box. Um, and this dialog box is perfect for right now, this second. Uh, and it will make complete sense when it opens. So you get to supply previous filters. So that way, if you've done something, you want to come back and uh, have exactly the same thing applied, you can do it. So you click yes. And that will just add our mask here. 
Now, because we've got a mask already generated inside of Photoshop, if we come to this little square icon with a, uh, an arrow coming out of it, and we tick, click that on. In fact, we hover over it, we can see we get a tooltip saying export masks. So now if we click apply, and it renders and goes back to Photoshop, we can see we now have the easy mask that we created before available to us inside of Photoshop. One way that you could use this is if we hold down the command or control key and we click on the mask itself, that will actually make a selection of the quick mask, well, of the easy mask rather. So if I come down here to curves, for example, we now have a masked curve there. And if we pull this down, we can see it darkens on the background without darkening down the subject because the, our mask is protecting us. So that is one real cool way of doing that. Um, what I'm going to do, though, is I am just going to uh, grab our background image here and duplicate it again, throw it up on top to hide what we've done before. Because I just want to show one other thing with effects, with our op optics rather. Um, and that is, I mentioned it briefly, but I just want to actually show it in operation. And that is workspaces. So basically, I'm just going to allow this. I mean, we're not doing anything with it specifically. We're just looking at the workspace. So we are now on the default workspace, but there's two built in ones, which are edit. Uh, just have editing parameters if visible and we have view. So that's literally just for seeing things. And of course, you can basically have your own by choosing different windows of what's on. So for example, here, let's say we could have uh, metadata. Exif. Uh, console, uh, color wheels, for example. Actually, let's get rid of console for a second. And so now we can create this workspace and call, call it new. And we can call this, um, uh, we'll just call it more because it's not quite all because uh, the console is in there. We're not assigning a key to it. We're just clicking OK. So now we go to workspace. We can see we have more as well as the ones that are on keys. Now we could assign a key ourselves here, but it's not there. So we can go back to default. So it just depends on what you want to have in there. Folks, that's a very quick look at some of the new features in Optics 2022. It's fantastic. There is a discount code that I have, 15%. All the details on that are inside the description as well. So you can get 15% off. It is a great program and it's a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to doing the whole load about it. So like I said, if you're if you want to hear that, subscribe to the channel, like the video if you like the video, and of course hit the bell if you want to get notified. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.